Hallelujah. 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 Our God is great and greatly to be praised. Let's give God praise. Let's give God the praise. Hallelujah. 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 God is awesome. And I'm grateful for his, his presence today. I thank the Lord for the privilege to be to stand here. I thank him for the opportunity he's given me to use what he's placed in me for his glory. I thank God. I thank God. With all that I'm not, he still wants to use me. With all of my faults, he still keep pushing me forward. And I'm grateful for that. With all of that, he uses you all to encourage me, and I thank God for that. Um, you may be seated right now, please. I give honor, I greet, I give honor and praise to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank him because he continues to grow me, he grows me, and he throws me. I praise the Lord, and I'm thankful for this brand new day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Excuse me. Next, I'm thankful for my bishop, Pastor Bishop, my, my pastor, Bishop Wanda Jacqueline Cisco. Yes. Bishop in the Lord's house here at Beyond the Veil Worship Center. And how God uses her in the lives of his people near and far. We all have our own personal testimony of how God has used her to encourage us, to correct us, to challenge us, and to grow us. And so I'm thankful that she has said yes to a call of God on her life because I've benefited from that call for her accepting that call. I thank you, Bishop, for allowing me to stand here and say what God has given to me. I also thank all the ministers and ministry leaders here on staff. I thank you for praying for me and with me. May God bless you all. I thank all of the uh, members, all of those who are here, even online, who have chosen to come and fellowship with us today. May God bless you all. Last but not least, I thank God for my husband. Yes, yes, he decided to come and surprise me this morning and come to church with me. So I, I thank you for giving me all the support that I need, um, giving me all the support I need. I thank God for my bonus daughter and grandchildren. I have two grandsons, KJ and Tyler, and God has continues to use them powerfully in my life. And for that, I am thankful. I am thankful. Now let us pray. Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, O oh Lord God, for your Holy Spirit. I thank you, O oh Lord God, that you love us so much, O oh God, that, that you want to use us, that you never give up on us. You always keep on forgiving us. So, Lord God, I pray tonight, this morning, Lord God, that you would have your way in me. I pray for your Holy Spirit, O oh God, to stand up in me like never before. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, let's get to the word of God. Turn with me, if you will, to Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 through Obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. God 
God's word is blessed. Please have a seat. The title of my message today is The Privilege of Serving God. It is a privilege to serve God. It really is an honor to serve God and it's a means to be used. I, I can understand more and more the scripture that says it's blessed. You are more blessed when you give. We need to understand what it means to serve God because God doesn't need anything from us, really. God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. We are meant to call on him. God calls us to his service by supplying us with grace, talent, and passion so that we may well fulfill his purpose for us in this world. The greatest example of this comes from the life of Jesus Christ who was the manifestation of God's saving, of God's saving love in the world. John 8, 16 tells us that Jesus gave his life in service to others, but most especially to those in need, including the poor, the sick, the forgotten, and anyone who is in distress in society. So great was Jesus' love for all of us, for we all are children of that he willingly gave his own life. I believe everybody, every single person, every single believer should have the mindset that says, I'm here to serve. The more we serve, the less self-centered we will be. A good way to start is to say, as Isaiah 68 says, here am I, Lord, send me. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, in Christ, God's response to our, here I am, send me, is serve me. The thought of serving God, being his hands and feet of Jesus Christ himself, could make you feel you're not good enough. I know I've had those thoughts. I have said to the Lord, send me. But actually, when it's time to step up and do what God has called me to do, it's been intimidating. But I'm getting better. I'm getting better, and I'm, I praise God for that. <clears throat> it's like stepping out of the boat onto the water, and you don't know how to swim. It's a big step of faith to obey God when he says, serve me. You may ask yourself, how could God use anything I have to offer? There's nothing special about me that God needs. This person or that person is much more qualified. However, John 12, 26 say, Jesus says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. How can God use anything I have to offer? What do I have that God needs and can use? There's nothing special about me that God needs. Then I remember the word garage sale. I have put myself out there and people say, bye. Action act. Yeah, they came by just the garage sale. And I put myself out there and people came by and they act casually, interested. They looked around, but then they left. And they said, there's nothing here that I want. Is this what the Lord does when we step into his presence? Of course not. Of course not. Does he look at us and say to himself, there's nobody here that I want? Absolutely not. God wants to use all of us. Oh. God wants to use all of us. There's nobody here that I want. So God wants to use us all. Our loving God does not think the way we think. We are his, we, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We are his redeemed, forgiven people. With all our mistakes, he forgives us, tells us to get up, brush ourselves off, and keep going. We are the ones he has gifted, and he's the one who equips us when he calls us. 
phone. He's calling you. Knock, knock. Answer the call and serve. Yes, we are equipped to serve the Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. No matter what, where you where you are in your walk with the Lord. You may be at the very beginning where you just come to know the Lord. Third, you may be a seasoned Christian who's been in church all of your life, but you've sat in the back. Third, First Corinthians 12, 1 through 11 talks about some of the gifts the Holy Spirit gives us. The extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit empowers and operates in all believers, and we use our gifts to serve. The very existence of spiritual gifts are intended by God to help us get busy in serving him through his body, the church. There's always work to do in the church. If you say there's nothing to do, you have nothing to do. If you're bored, come talk to me. I got some, some work for you to do. <clears throat> I got some work for you. There's plenty. The, the teen ministry got some work for you to do. The children's ministry got work for you to do. The evangelism team has work for you to do. No excuse for not serving. Sp our spiritual gifts are designed and assigned by God. 1 Peter 4.10 tells us, as every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God, through his word, admonishes us to use the gifts he has given. If you don't know what your gifts are, get busy serving and God will expose your gift. Have you ever received? Oh, yeah, thank you. Have you ever Have you ever received a Christmas gift or a birthday gift from someone and they they were proud to give it to you, but you didn't really want it? Then months later, that person asked you about it and you never even used it or you've re-gifted it or pitched it. Hopefully, you've never accidentally given it back to the person that gave it to you. Hmm. Would we ever do this to God? take what he gives us to serve him and stuff it away like we didn't have a gift at all, we will be held accountable for how we have served the Lord. Serve. Psalm 100 verse 2 tells us to serve the Lord with gladness. Gladness, not out of anger, not out of hatred, but serve with gladness. I'm glad that God still wants to use me. I'm glad to be in his presence. I'm glad that I have the activity of my limbs to go where he wants me to go, to say what he wants me to say, and to do what he wants me to do. He helps, he's helping me to stand here before you today. God can use anyone. If he can use me, he can use anyone. I had a fear of public speaking for a long, long time. I'm still getting past it, but God has helped me to understand that it's not me, it's him in me that's doing the work. So I have to stand in him and not in me. So as I yield to the Holy Spirit, he helps me to stand before you today and say what I am saying. We all, all of us, all of us here are of great value to the kingdom of God. As we connect, <laughs> that means we give our lives to Christ, <laughs> to Jesus Christ. When we connect, we, we grow. We grow through Bible study. <laughs> Bible study on Wednesdays. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> when we connect, we grow. <clears throat> and as we grow, we serve. There are no such gifts as, I'm just here to learn. That's not a gift. There's no gift that says, this, this, is, oh, this is serving help. I'm sorry. There are no gifts that says, I'm just here to learn gifts. There are no gifts where, when is this over gift? That's not a gift. Serving helps us to discover and develop our spiritual, our spiritual gifts. If you are not serving, get busy now and serve. You will be amazed how God will use you and mature you in your walk with the Lord. God, your walk with the Lord through your service. In conclusion, the greatest example of serving comes from the life of Jesus who was the manifestation of God's saving love in the world. Jesus spent his life in service to others. 
He spent his entire life in service to others, especially those in need, including the poor, the sick, the rejected, the neglected, anyone in society that was neglected, God, he, he, wanted, he used them. He served them. So great was Jesus' love for all of us, for we all are children of God, that he willingly gave his own life. Mark 10, 45 tells us, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. So we don't have no excuse not to serve. If Jesus served, we got to serve. You can't just wait to see what your gift is. Get out there and serve. God will tell you. Um, to serve God, then, is to follow the example of Jesus' life and ministry to serve others. We can truly express our love for God, for his creation, and for one another through our service. Through our service. Now, as, as I concluded my message, if you um, don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and you desire to serve, there's an opportunity for you to give your life today. We open the doors of the church and if you want to be saved and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you can repeat after me and say, Dear God, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Come into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. If you said that with me, you are saved. It's just that easy. If you're already saved and desire a closer walk with the Lord, we are offer, opening up the, the doors of the church. You can come on up for prayer. We have ministers here who are willing to pray with you um, and for you. The altar is now open for prayer. Amen.